There you have it, the first appearance of Hillary Clinton, the Democratic presumptive nominee, and her new VP pick, Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. They are in Miami at Florida International University. Uh, Florida clearly a big battleground state. You heard the two of them uh, officially kicking off the Democratic ticket for 2016 together. And here to discuss the politics and the election is uh, Washington Post reporter Philip Bump and in Washington, CBSN political contributor and partner at 270 Strategies, Linda Tran. Okay, Linda, let's kick it off with you. I want to know what your take. You know, he started off first, and his first words were actually in Spanish, where he said, welcome, everyone. We're all Americans. He's fluent in Spanish, we know. We know that'll be a big uh, asset for the ticket this election. But what did you make of uh, their first appearance together? Well, I think it was a really natural thing for him to do. He often interjects uh, Spanish into the speeches that he delivers. And I think what it showed was he really knew who he was talking to. He knew where he was. He understood the audience. He's in Florida. And he also wanted to really interject this theme of inclusion and community and to make the case in sharp contrast to Donald Trump that we're not just a nation of white Americans. We're, we're a nation that has long been a melting pot, and that includes the many, many immigrants and American-born Spanish speakers that were listening to him as he spoke today. And you, you know, for me, I'm sorry, it, Linda, go ahead. For me, it was a, a bit of a walk down memory lane, obviously having worked for him and, and knowing him very well. It was a great thing to be able to hear uh, about how his family was doing, about the things that had driven him to the point where he is right now and, and what really governs him. Uh, I especially appreciated when he was talking about the lesson he learned from his mother, that you can either be right or do right, and that that has been a defining moment that really has made him the kind of optimist and happy warrior that we see on the stage today. I was, I was just about to say that you worked for Senator Kane when he was governor of Virginia, and he acknowledged Saturday that many people are now meeting him for the first time, which is often the case for vice presidential picks. How do you think that voters at the national level will receive him? Well, if the reaction from the Twitterverse was any sort of indicator, it seems that people liked what they saw. He is a deeply personal, personable uh, politician. He is comfortable on the stage. And while he was using the teleprompter, which actually he frankly often doesn't do, he's the kind of person who speaks from notes or just riffs from the podium, I think what they saw was somebody they can relate to. They saw a guy who is a, a deeply proud family man. He, you heard him acknowledge his wife, Ann Holton, who is also a great Virginia leader, a secretary of education there and a former district court judge you heard him acknowledge her multiple times he also talked about his mentor and somebody he admires very deeply his father-in-law Linwood Holton the former governor of Virginia um, and spoke in, in great detail about how he desegregated schools and how that really made an impact on Tim Kaine and his own career as a civil rights activist and of course he referenced his kids and his son Nat Kane being a, mem a member of the Marine Corps and somebody who is about to head off to Europe to be deployed. It was a, a prime example of the kind of killer attack that Tim Kaine does. He does it with a smile, right? He talked about what he's proud of in his son, but in that same reference was able to poke at Donald Trump for saying that he wants to turn his back on our commitments to NATO. It was very powerful, and I think it was a great example of the kind of value that Tim Kaine adds. It's been interesting you mentioned the military because Kaine did tear heavily into Donald Trump, including his past comments on the military. Let's take a listen. What does Donald Trump say about these great Americans, these two millions? He repeatedly calls the American military, quote, a disaster. And just this week, Donald Trump said that as president, he'd consider turning America's back on our decades old commitments to our allies. And all of you remember a few months ago when he said about a Senate colleague of, of, of then Senator Clinton's and mine, John McCain, that he wasn't a hero because he had been captured and served as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. And he wants to be commander in chief? While our service members are out there on the front lines, Trump saying he'd leave our allies at the mercy of an increasingly aggressive Russia. And folks, that's an open invitation to Vladimir Putin to just roll on in. Even a lot of Republicans say that that's terribly dangerous. When you, listen. All right, I'm hiring for the speech writing team. That, that, um, 
We, we've seen again and again that when Donald Trump says he has your back, you better watch out. Linda, being an attack dog is part of the territory when you're VP, but how effective will he be in countering Donald Trump? I think he's going to be very effective, and I think we saw the first example of that today. I mean, listen, he's a civil rights attorney. He knows how to make a case, he knows how to tell a story, and he knows how to win. And he's showcasing that from the stage today. I expect we'll see a lot of that as we head into the Democratic National Convention and the weeks and months that are still ahead. This is a guy who, again, he comes off with a smile, but as Hillary Clinton said, he's got a backbone of steel. Let's not forget that this is a guy who, as governor, was able to close the gun show loophole in in the state that is the backyard of the NRA. He's a guy who was able to pass a smoking ban in restaurants in the home of Philip Morris. So while he is somebody that people acknowledge from both sides of the aisle is uh, somebody who tries to look for common ground and get things done, he is also somebody who stands up for his values and his principles. And those align with Hillary Clinton, and he's going to talk about them a ton in the months ahead. Philip, we know that both Clinton and uh, Governor Kane, Senator Kane, are both proven entities in politics. Right. Donald Trump runs on being the outsider. So how's that going to impact the race? No, it's a good question. We've heard a lot of references to family histories of politics, which obviously Clinton also has, as we all know, uh, which is a contrast with this theme of we need change, throw them out. They're part of the establishment. Donald Trump this morning, one of the first things he did in attacking Kane was going after he's part of this old, old system. I think what the Clinton team is doing here is they're trying to be strategic about positioning that experience as an asset against Donald Trump, that Donald Trump, uh, as you heard in just that s segment on foreign policy, that Donald Trump's uh, lack of familiarity with the issues is a, a detriment to his candidacy. They, however, being this experience, being that deeper bench, uh, see it as an asset. So looking ahead as we go into the Democratic Convention, what are you looking for, Phil? I mean, I think it'll be fascinating to see what the response to Kane is. I mean, there was, a, there was a great tweet by a guy named Pour Me Coffee on Twitter yeah. who called him the brother-in-law you like, which is uh -huh. sort of how he comes off, right? He's yeah. sort of like someone, that, he's very casual in a way that we didn't see from the Republican ticket last week. Uh, Mike Pence is a much more sort of uh, ramrod, straight sort of guy uh, than Tim Kane was there. We saw him talk about foreign policy. The, the uh, Democrats historically have had a disadvantage on foreign policy, but we're seeing because of the Clinton's background and now with Kane added to the ticket that that's becoming an asset for them as well. So it's interesting to see how he helps bolster her in that regard as well. And the new brother-in-law, you know, the marriage has just begun. So right. it's early on. <laughs> right. We'll see sure. how it goes. Exactly. Uh, Philip Bump and Linda Tran, thank you both for joining me.